All right, so today we're going to be looking at two more inking techniques. The first one is called scribbling or scribble, and that just means to cover with meaningless marks. And the second one is stippling, and that's to draw using a series of dots or small marks. So just like before, we're going to be looking at our value scale, and we're going to be using these two different techniques in order to create different values. Okay, So let's take a look at the scribble. Scribble is actually pretty easy to do, but it's easy to get carried away with. So you have to be a little bit on the careful side. So I'm going to show you over here just a little bit. Scribble is just a matter of putting in totally random lines. They don't have any meanings or purpose. Okay. Try to avoid like creating patterns. Okay. Uh, sometimes we do that, but for the most part, you want these to be pretty random. Okay. So let's take a look here. Zero, on the white sheet of paper, we're going to leave that blank. So for the one, we need that to be relatively light. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to scribble, but very, very little. That's it. Okay. The next one, I'm going to go and I'm going to put the scribbles a little bit closer together. And I'm just going to monitor. I don't want it to get too dark, but it needs to be darker than that one. And it's like I said, they're totally random. The one thing I would say is just, you know, try not to get too sloppy. So be careful with like make one area too dark and one area too light for this. Okay. The third one, we're going to do the same thing, except that we have to get a little bit closer together so that it looks a little bit tighter. So I would start by putting them like far apart, similar to how we did that, but then add more. So when I look at these two, they look very similar. So I'm just going to keep adding to make it look a little bit darker. But again, be sure that this is all totally random. Okay, you're literally scribbling. Just like when we doodle sometimes, and we just don't pay attention to what we're doing, we're just doodling. Here, it's a little bit more controlled, because we're trying to create different values. And then the last one, obviously, is going to be the darkest one. So we're repeating this right here, but we're going to do a lot more than that. And like I said, I like to build it up gradually, so I'm not going to start off by going super dark. I'm just going to keep scribbling and scribbling and scribbling. And eventually this will get as dark as I want it to be. This is going to work really well when we're doing our rocks and when we're doing our plants and our um, coral in the project that we're working on. So that looks pretty good. Still. I could probably go a little bit darker. And guys, when I'm doing this, I'm not controlling the pressure. Okay, I'm using pure ink. Okay, so I'm not like trying to make it light pressure or dark pressure. It's really kind of like when we did our cross hatching is the number of lines that you put in will determine how dark this gets. And there you go. So that's the first one, and that's scribble, scribbling. Okay. So you want white, light, medium, dark, and then really dark. It's not going to go to pure black because we're not going to fill in every, every little um, crevice. Okay. The second one is also very easy, but it is much more time consuming. And this is called stippling. And stippling is nothing more than drawing with a series of dots or small marks. We're going to try to use dots. Now, let me show you over here for a minute. When we are doing the dots, a couple of things. You can, we're gonna be using the Sharpie 0.5 lead. Um, don't tap. If you start tapping like this, you're gonna crack the tip, okay? And then it's gonna like splatter and make a mess. So you're not like tapping, you're just pressing, okay? The other thing that you wanna avoid is you don't wanna create patterns. Okay, so when you are start when we start doing the stippling, we want to do them a little bit more random. 
Um, there are times where we actually do use these for patterns, but for this exercise, I want you to keep it fresh, okay? So let's take a look on this side. Zero, once again, we're gonna leave that one blank. For one, we're just gonna randomly start putting dots far apart to create like a light value, like a light grayish looking value. Remember, these things have to be looked at from a distance, just like our, uh, our cross hatching. So that would be a light gray. This one, exactly the same thing, except that we're going to start putting the dots closer together. So um, I'm going to start by putting in the dots like I did here, and then I will add more dots. So here you can see that these two values right now pretty much look the same. And we don't want them to look the same. We want them to look different. We want one to be darker than the other. So to control that is actually very easy. All you have to do is keep adding dots. When you add your dots for this particular value here, try not to let them touch the dots that are already there. So basically you're trying to kind of go between these dots. Very easy to do, but it is time consuming. The advantage of this one is that you have a ton more control than when you're doing the scribbling on the top. So when I look at this from a little bit of a distance, I can see that this is looking a little bit darker than that one. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then the next one, same thing, except the dots are going to get closer together. And then when we do the very last one, those dots are going to be really, really close. And sometimes they may even touch. So just show you here. This is totally random, remember. And I'm going to speed through this because it does take a little while, especially the last one it does take a while to get it nice and dark so i'm just going to go ahead and go right through this okay and then for this last one i'm just going to put the dots super super close together All right, so once you have your two value scales done, one with scribble and one with stippling, you're going to use both of those techniques to complete these two little drawings on the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to get these started, but they're super easy to do. The first one, these already have been map, uh, mapped out for you. So the first one, we've got zero to one, one to two, three to four. So zero, we're going to leave blank, and that's with the scribble. And on this side, we're just going to put just a little bit of scribble. That's it. That's it. Super easy. Now, here, we're going to start off with a one. And as we go down, we're going to let it get a little darker. So, start off with the top. Remember to keep this random. Try to stay within the edges, within the outlines. So I'm going to fill this up with a number one, and then I'll add more near the bottom to make the bottom just a tiny bit darker to a number two. So that should look slightly darker on the bottom than on the top. 
Then for the darker part away from the light source, we're going to go from a three all the way down to a four. So remember to build it up slow because once you put these lines down, you're not going to get them off. So I would recommend never start with a three or a four. Always start with something less and then gradually build it up. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I should be able to see zeros, ones, twos, threes, and four. Okay. And then on this very last one here, this one is actually super easy, but it does take a while. So I'm going to help you get started with it, and then I'll fast forward through it so you guys can see what it looks like when it's done. Light source is still in the same spot. The mapping is identical, so we know that this area here is going to stay blank. These areas, the dots are going to be far apart like this up here. So I'm just going to start putting in some random dots. And that should be enough. Okay, so zero, one. Here, I'm going to do one, and then I'm going to go to two. So the easiest way to do this is actually to fill up this whole thing with a number one and then add some extra dots near the bottom to create a number two. So the last one, that one's going to take the longest, so I'm just going to like fast forward through this. Um, but you're basically going to start with a three here, and then near the bottom you're going to really, really get those close together. So there you have it guys. So there's new two techniques that we're going to be using is scribble and stippling. Remember scribble is just random lines and you have to control the how close they are in order to get your values. And stippling is dots. Um, the closer the dots, the darker they become. Now let's take a look how this is going to be used in our project. So let's take a look here. And I'm just going to show you. So this started off as a sketch, pencil sketch. And then I did all of the outline work with the Sharpie. And then you can see what I've done. In this area back here where it's suggesting uh, far away land, I used hatching by itself. And I did mine at an angle. But you can see here in some areas I used stippling. The area underneath the turtle and in some of the plants I did scribbling. The turtle itself was all done with cross hatching and the brain coral and some of this other coral I did with stippling as well. So you're going to be using all of these techniques when you ink your next project. After the inking is done, like it is right here, this is ready to be painted and we're going to be painting this with watercolors. Okay, so make sure when you're doing this assignment right here, especially here, Make sure that you're doing it properly and that you're practicing properly because you, this are the techniques in addition to the other ones that you're going to be using to finish your inking. Okay. All right. We'll see you in a little bit.